Very nice. Sustainable packaging. Love to see it. Ripped it. I've ruined the whole experience. So, this just got delivered to me like 20 minutes ago. I pulled it out of the box. We're gonna unbox it together. I have not looked at it, not seen it. I've got some questions about the 4090 because first of all, will it fit in my computer? I've talked to Puget Systems, which is where I get my computer. So, like I have to maybe pull out the hard drive cage to make this fit. I'm not sure, we're gonna find out. But today we're gonna just kinda Let's open it up, let's take a look, let's just talk about it for a minute. I'm not allowed to actually show you any of the reviewing test stuff, which I'm about to do. Oh my god, that's a really cool unboxing experience. Ah, I like cool packaging, so I gotta give them props for that. This thing is absolutely huge. Oh my god. Oh, and it's thick. I thought the 3090 was massive, and it, I mean, it is, but like this thing is chonkin'. I don't have a desk mat, so I'm afraid to like, Scratch my desk. Do you have anything I can put this on? Hang on, I do, actually. I bought the Elgato green screen mouse pad thing back when I was streaming a lot. And as you can see from the unopened packaging, I never used it. I swear I didn't plan this with like NVIDIA green or anything. And my shirt's green, whatever. All right, there we go. Now I can set it down. Shoo! All right, for size comparison, I've got some other cards we can compare size. Here is the 4090, the 3090. The 3080 is at my house right now. I don't have it here, I'm at my office. Um, but I have the 3070. I don't think I've shown the 3070 on camera yet. Forever I've been meaning to do my like 30 series comparison of like the 3070, 80, and 90, which I have all three of. I was gonna do a whole comparison for creative work. I just haven't gotten the chance to film that video, even though I've done a lot of the testing. So when I post my 4090 review, I might actually just use that as an opportunity to show you the 3070, 80, and 90, and the 4090, because presumably, based on the information we have, this card's supposed to like, outclass the 3090 by two to four times performance or something. So we're gonna see. I think if I turn them sideways, you'll see what's more interesting though. The width, the girthiness of this card. The 4090 is like, this is like a good bit thicker. So this is the 3090, which was already really big. 4090 on the bottom, obviously, 3070. <laughs> you know, actually, so the Founders Edition 4090 is actually a little bit shorter, like lengthwise than the 3090, which is great, because this one already, I had to kind of get into my case like at an angle to get it in there. This one, I might still have to do that, but it doesn't actually seem like it's gonna be a problem there. So if you can fit a 3090 lengthwise, you can fit a 4090, that's good. It's the height that I'm concerned about. It's also got kind of an angle to it. I don't know if you can kind of see. So interesting design. As far as IO, we've got one HDMI and three display ports, which I think is on par. That's exactly what we had on the 3090. So that'll work just fine. And we have the, the interesting little power connector that people have been talking about. Uh, there's, I think it's some kind of self-regulating power thing to make sure that it's drawing the appropriate amount and it's not overdrawing your system. And so there's little extra pins. I have heard from multiple trusted sources, both like YouTube videos and otherwise, that you're not supposed to be plugging and unplugging the cable, the power cable converter here. That's something we have to be careful of, and I'm not gonna like test that because I don't think I can get another one of these if I mess it up. Filming this out of order, I just figured I should actually open the rest of the box. This is the fancy little power adapter thing. Come straight out, so I've gotta figure out how to properly like cable manage this. I'm told that this section up here is fairly delicate. I'm just gonna let it sit safely in its box. All right, so overall first impressions and things that I was worried about with this card, the size, it is slightly shorter than 3090, so that's great. I'm not as worried about it fitting in the case. The thickness, I might have to lose one of my capture cards because I have two Elgato capture cards for video stuff, and I might have to, I'll definitely take one out while installing this. It may not be able to go back in. I'm not sure, so we'll see. The other thing I was a little concerned about was with how big and heavy this, like this is a heavy card. We've got multiple brackets, so we should be able to double secure it into the back of the system, so that should help it to not sag. I don't know. Now, obviously there's a lot to talk about in terms of like the internals and the cores and the cooling and you know, the PC building aspect, but that's not my forte. That's just not what I'm best at. And channels like Linus Tech Tips are gonna cover that in way more detail with way more experience than I have in my whole body. So my main focus is gonna be testing this for creative applications, seeing how if you are doing animation, visual effects, digital art in general, how does this help? Does, is this worth the price? What kind of performance can we expect? How far can we push it? What can it do? How, what speeds are there? So anyway, that, that's kind of the, the way I'm gonna be approaching this, as you'd probably guess if you've watched any of my channel before. Back when I covered the 3090, I think I was one of the only people covering the 3090 from an artist's perspective, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do again for the 4090. That's super exciting for me. I'm stoked to check this out. I'm not allowed to show you any of the review stuff until Tuesday, so uh, make sure you're subscribed. But based on what we've seen, as far as the reporting and the press stuff that NVIDIA has come out with, 
This is supposed to be two to four times as powerful as the 3090, which was already a monstrously fast card. But I am fascinated to find out how this is gonna perform in the Blender benchmarks and not just the benchmarks, but I'm gonna go deeper and actually try to do some Blender stuff using this card and experience it for myself. I also wanna try it obviously in Maya. Maya is not as GPU heavy a program, so GPU rendering in Arnold is something I will be testing, but there's not a whole lot more in Maya that I need to do with this. Obviously the amount of VRAM is gonna come into play with the cache playback and things like that, but we'll talk about all that in another video. Something I've noticed, a lot of people online are focused on the gaming aspects and like some of the streaming stuff and video encoding which makes sense, it's some of the big stuff about these cards, but very few people are focused on the creative application just because there's not that many of us. Like we're kind of a more 3D artists, animators, digital creators, like that That group of people, if you're watching my channel basically, uh, it makes sense that most people aren't looking at it from that perspective, but that's why I'm so interested in it. People are sleeping on Nvidia in terms of what these cards can do. And I'm not just talking about the speed of rendering, we're all pretty much aware that things are fast. There's some really, really cool stuff that you can do with these cards that people aren't really talking about or showing because that's just not where they focus their attention, I guess. It's just not what people do. So that's something I want to look at. One of the things I want to explore when we really review this card is the price and value proposition. Is it worth the money? I want to look at it from the perspective of 3D art and for freelance, for professional artists, for students and aspiring artists. A lot of this stuff is focused on rendering just because that's one of the more obvious examples of how these impact our workflow. But there's actually like workflow ramifications that come with these types of cards. Ramification sounds like such a negative connotation word. I mean, in a good way, like people are sleeping on NVIDIA Omniverse. If you haven't been watching the NVIDIA Omniverse platform, you're missing out. There is some amazing stuff happening over there. It's free, like that's a free thing that you can mess with. I'm gonna be doing some videos on it. So if you're not super aware of it, no worries, I will be covering it. I'm actually gonna link a video. I made a video for NVIDIA Omniverse and it's on the NVIDIA Omniverse website. Like if you go through the website, you'll find like I'm the first video there. It's kind of cool. But if you watch that video, it'll actually show you a really, really interesting thing that exists where you can literally connect Maya and Unreal and Houdini to Omniverse. Blender has the support for this. They're all kind of at different stages. But in the example I show, you can literally have the scenes open and have different people or different softwares active and you make changes and the changes populate. It's really cool. And for those who are in the know on like moving data from one place to another, I can be in Maya messing with this tree asset and I put a lattice on it. Lattice is a nonlinear deformer. It doesn't work in Unreal. You can't put that data through Unreal, but it's happening in Unreal. Like it connects properly. Anyway, it's very cool. My point is that NVIDIA Omniverse, like many of the other things NVIDIA is doing, people are sleeping on, people are not paying attention to, but that's what I'm interested in checking these cards out for and seeing just what we can do with them. How worth it are these cards? Not just because they're fast and they render quickly, we'll talk about all that when I can review them, but what else can we do with all the power that these give us? And basically get the most for your money. Because if you're gonna spend the money and buy a card like this, you should know all the things you can do with it. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being a part of the unboxing. Uh, if you are curious about these cards and how they're gonna perform and things like that, make sure you subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week because I'm gonna be reviewing this thing in full and we'll compare it against the 30 series cards. I think that'll be fun. So thanks for watching. I'm Sir Wade. I'll see you in the next video.